be able to work on the heart and change the heart. As much as you and I pray, as much as you and I read the Bible, as much as you and I are maybe anointed and gifted to do certain things, can you just be honest real quickly? We all have bad thoughts. Y'all, y'all not with me. Y'all not being honest. See, we can't help you. Can't, you can't help yourself if you're not truthful with yourself. And we have to be honest and say, you know what? It's a sinful nature. Constantly dealing with the sinful nature. Uh, the Bible says it's not what goes in a man that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of the man. And a lot of times what comes out are the things that are planted in because of the sinful nature. And the enemy is also keeping track of who we are. And he's actually dealing with our temptations and the things that get us. And he's constantly trying to plant things in our minds because our minds is the door to our spirit. Keep it in, he plants it in the mind. You think about it long enough. It's going to seep into the soil of the ground, which is your into your body, into your spirit. And after it is seeps in, it's going to act, react or act on it. Man was born under the nature of sin, and the nature has to be subjected to the Holy Spirit. We have to continuously, continuously be regenerated. We have to ask God, you know, forgive me of my sins. Lord, help me. Help me in the areas here. You know where I struggle. What does all that have to do with, with love has to cost you something? Because before you share yourself with anybody else, you've got to deal with some of these things in you. And if you don't deal with any of those, some of these things that are within you, you and me, desperation is going to occur. Tonight, the side of the area that I want to talk about in terms of love is going to cost you something, part three, I've covered many areas. So those of you that have not seen my other areas, you need to go back, watch part two, part one. They're on my wall. They're also on YouTube. But I want to deal with desperation tonight. But before I go into that, I want to talk about something, give you a scripture that Paul gave us in Romans, the seventh chapter, the 15th verse through the 20th verse. Talking about why is the, you know the, why is this nature in us? What is going on with this nature that's in us? That's the thing we have to deal with. Paul says, and I'm reading the NIV version. This is Romans 7, 5, 15 through 20. It says, I do not understand what I do. What does that mean? He said, and he goes further to clarify that. He says, I do not understand what I do. What, what are you talking about, Paul? What, do you, what does that mean? For what I want to do, I do not do. So the good things that I want to do, and some of you say, you know what? I find myself there often. And if you be honest with yourself, you say, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm there. I, I see what Paul is talking about. Now, I'm not going to apologize for going to Bible because if you don't apply biblical principles first to your life, Whatever relationship you seek to be in, you're going to find yourself messed up. You're going to find yourself giving what you should not be giving, and you're going to find yourself jacked up. Rita Green is with us tonight. God bless you, Rita. Love you so much. Glad you're with us. So Paul says in Romans 7, 15 through 20, I do not understand what I do. That's just this crazy, sinful nature that we have. And he goes on to explain. He says, for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, watch this. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. 17, as it is, it is no longer I myself who do it. Watch this. But it's the sin living in me. Again, somebody asked, why is the heart so deceitful? There's sin that lives within us, even the repentance sinner. For those people that say they're free from sin, they don't understand. You're free from the curse of sin, but you're not living a sin-free life. You're not free from sin in terms of being void of sin. That's not how that works. When you're saved, you're being free from the curse of sin. So in 18, he says, for I know that good itself, watch this, does not dwell in me. You by default, 
What is your default? Your default is your sinful nature. So if you don't do anything, if you put no work into your life, your default is going to be your sinful nature. Again, we're going to talk about other people and adding someone to your life in a minute, but we've got to deal with ourselves first. Be honest. Your default is a sinful nature. That's your default. If you do nothing, if you don't read your word, if you don't buffet this flesh, you don't turn your plate down, you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't operate and under the capacity of trying to change some things, your default is going to have precedent over your life. Your sinful nature is going to lead you and guide you into the, all of the wrong people, the wrong places, the wrong decisions, the wrong timing, all of that. Your sinful nature and my sinful nature is jacked up. We can't rely on that. I hope I'm helping you. I just need you to understand. If you don't want to do the Bible, God bless you. You, I mean, you, you know, you, you take your own risk and, and see what happens. You ignore the principles of God and under, take time to understand this is a spiritual thing. If you don't, if you ignore all of that, see, you can't, God created relationships. And if I, if I want the, my relationship to be right, I've got to go to the founder of relationships. I mentioned there's a BMW plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where you can actually go and watch to, to the manufacturer. They create and manufacture the BMWs right there in Spartanburg, South Carolina. You can go there and watch uh, your particular car. You want to buy a car? You can watch your particular car being assembled piece by piece as it goes down the assembly line. I, I tell you, that sounds like a wonderful experience to be able to watch something, go to the manufacturer and watch something being put on piece by piece. The scriptures help us to understand, is going back to the manufacturer and teach and showing us how this thing breaks down and watch these things being put together properly piece by piece. Paul is saying uh, in Romans 7, I'm going to the 18th verse, he says, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. So people, you want to know why people do jacked up stuff to us? You want to know why we do jacked up stuff to people, whether we want to admit it or not? It's because we have a sinful nature that dwells in us that requires work in order to buff it, in order to take care of, in order to eradicate it. So it says, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is, he's saying it. My sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good. How many of us have had the desire to do what is good, but we in, but that, that sinful nature kicked in? Ladies and gentlemen, you give flesh the opportunity to be flesh. Guess what? It's going to be flesh. I don't care how many scriptures you quote, get how saved you are, how filled with the Holy Ghost you get somewhere. Where flesh can operate, flesh is going to be flesh because of our sinful nature. All right. Okay. For I have the desire to do what is good. That's what Paul says. But watch this. He said, but I cannot carry it out. He's just being honest. My nature is so strong that I can't, I, in my own, with my own strength, I can't carry it out. 19, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do, check that out, check that out, but the evil I do not want to do. And then he said, this I keep on doing. How many people have said, you know what, Lord, if you get me out of this, I won't do that no more. And you found yourself going right back to it. If you can help me to get over this person, I won't do that ever again. But you found yourself going back or doing those same things or making those same mistakes. How many of us have made New Year's resolution, resolutions that we broke by the time February came? It was a, everything that we said we were going to do. You got me? 
For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. 20. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that do it. That's Romans, the seventh chapter, the 15th through the 20th verse. I read the NIV version. So I want you to understand that you're dealing with a, a nature that you've got to deal with, and it's a constant thing. Paul's later on, some other verses said, I, I, I keep under my flesh. I deal with my flesh daily um, so that even though I preach to others, that I don't become a castaway, that I don't become um, subjected to the things that I preached on. It's a constant battle. All right, I'm talking about ourselves first before we talk about adding somebody on. Now I want to go over, go flip over to desperation. This is an area that many of us don't want to admit to. But if you, if you really focus in on this tonight and you really find yourself in this area of desperation, this is going to help you. Lisa Jacobs said, denial means I don't even know I am lying to myself. Thank you for mentioning that, Lisa, tonight. Tiffany said, how do I fight the flesh? It is so strong. It, it's very strong. Let me, let me deal with that, Tiffany's question, before I go into desperation. This is going to be good tonight. I, I feel it already. I, I feel it already. Remember I told y'all, I mean, I constantly fight this weight thing. I, I mean, with weight. I, I know some of y'all, you watch my YouTube videos. You can go and you can look at the, the um, that first, you know, that, that, that first picture under each one of my videos and my face is you know, head fat or my face is skinny. I go back and forth with this weight thing. There are certain food that I can't keep in the house. You, you're not with me. I'm, I'm, I know y'all talking about, okay, how does that work when I'm trying to get, find somebody to be in a relationship with? How does all, you got it? We got to deal with you first. Before we talk about adding anybody, I want to talk about counting the cost. Love is going to cost you something. And tonight we're going, in part three, we're dealing with you tonight. Next time we'll deal with the other person and getting other people. But it's got to start with you tonight. There's certain food that I can't keep in the house. As much as I want to say that I'm strong enough not to go in the refrigerator or not to go into the kitchen to eat it, my sinful nature, even though it's advantageous to my health, there are just certain things that if I have it in within my grasp, that I, I can't, if it's in my house, I'm going to go for it. I'm go, I'm, I just, I, I, it's just my nature. I just can't. So there's certain things I have to keep. Watch this from within my grasp and out of my house. What does that mean in the spiritual? What does that mean in terms of, of how do I, how I answer her question in terms of how do I buffet this flesh? It's going to take getting those things that we know that we're weak in out of our house. Oh Lord have mercy. What house? This house. This house, there are certain things that you're going to have to start changing. Elizabeth McMarion is here from Colorado. God bless you. Changing and making sure that you don't have access to those things. There are going to be some things that if you keep yourself from having access to, that you're going to eventually be delivered from. You eventually, you'll be in the house with somebody else. And it won't even tempt you. But that's a process. Then there's some things that you just cannot, you just can't have them around, period. You know, because you don't have the strength. <clears throat> the flesh. How do we deal with the flesh? 
It's a process of dealing what is first implanted in the mind. Watch how the enemy operates. The enemy is not omnipresent. Because God said, you know, in that meeting with Job, he said, where were you? He said, oh, man, I was, I was going to and fro. I'm just looking to see who I can trick up. If you're omnipresent, you don't go to and fro because you're already, you're, you're everywhere at the same time. Anybody has to go to and fro, you're not omnipresent. So the enemy is not omnipresent. The enemy is not omniscient, meaning the enemy doesn't know everything. But how the enemy gets us is he watches our patterns. He sits on the sideline and he watches our patterns. So, okay, I can, I can, I, I'm looking at them and I see how they react when this particular sex scene is on Empire or or Meeting Mary Jane or whatever these other shows are. I watch how they react to certain things or, you know, how what they like. I'm watching the movies that they watch. I watch the things that they say, and now I'm able to, okay, I, I, can, I can trick them up according to their pattern and their habit. So the enemy watches, since he's not omniscient, he watches our patterns, and those are the same thing that he plants in our heads. Your mind is the door to your spirit. After a while, you take the you 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 he plants it on. If you don't deal with it immediately, it's going to ingrain itself into your spirit. If you are battling, can I talk about the flesh for two seconds, and then we'll we'll move over to being desperate. The body we just read the scripture in Romans seven about the body and our sinful nature. Have you ever seen, and I've recently seen it, have you recently, have you ever seen um, either children or adults who are special needs? They don't know any better, but they, they, have, they, they have sexual desires. They don't know any, that they don't have, they don't process like you and I process, yet they have sexual desires. If you have a special needs child, you know, you've got to watch them and protect them and keep them from themselves because even though they don't process empire and these shows and these movies and all of these things that to see, it's a nature, y'all not with me, so even though they didn't learn it the way they learned it, we've learned it. There's a nature that's already there. And it's that sinful nature from Adam and Eve. Once sin came into the world, you don't even have to be taught it. It's a sinful nature. Children, when they when we first lied to us, we're like, now how in the world, when, we, when our children first lied to us for the first time, we're like, how in the world do they know how to lie? We didn't teach them how to lie. It's that sinful nature. Okay, so lust, dealing with that, that thing of lust, you've got to be able to buffet it, come against it. Use the example that I said, there's certain things that we cannot have in our house. Catherine Dickinson said, um, special needs are highly sexual. Yes, because the enemy knows that they don't have that constant buffer as we have, you know, we, that, 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 you know, because we're able to get the access to information, but they, they don't process things like we process them. So there's no buffer. So the enemy is constantly, so we have to be the buffer. We have to be the protector. And just like we have to be a protector, watch this, to children or adults who are special needs, God has to be our protector because many of us in the spirit, y'all not watch, watch this, watch this. Many of us in the spirit are special needs. Y'all, you, you, you missed it right now. You, you, you missed it. Paul just said it. Uh, this, uh, this just came to me. This is a special needs statement he just said. Watch this. Romans 7 and 15, he says, I do not understand what I do. Special needs. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate to do, and if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer 
I myself will do it. This is a special needs statement. It don't even make any sense. But it is the sin living in me. 18, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out because spiritually I'm special needs. Y'all not, not with me tonight. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I, I do not want to do this I keep doing because I'm special needs in the spirit in the spiritual realm. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's a sin that is living in me that does it. If a if if a, if a special needs person could articulate why they did what they did. Why they allowed somebody to take advantage of them. Why they operated y all, y all, y all, sexually when no one, no one had no no one taught them. It's Romans 17, 15 through 20. And you and I tonight, that's a revelation within itself tonight. Spiritually, our special needs, and we need we need to give God permission. To watch over us. The Holy Spirit protect to protect us and to keep us. To protect us from the sinful nature that we just automatically have. That is so deep in and of itself tonight. That is that is so deep. I don't know if you if you I'm hoping that you can you can process this tonight. Many of us have operated in the realm of special needs. If 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 special needs people, I'm gonna move from this. I just wanna and I'm and I want y'all to say I, I I had a special needs daughter. So I, I that's why I'm put that out there. You know um they love us they want to do good they don't want to do what's wrong but there's certain things they don't because the nature overrides, you see what I'm saying? The nature overrides. And many of us have operated in the spiritual sense in the same capacity because our sinful nature override the thought processes. Okay? So somebody said, how can I deal with this lustful nature? There's certain one, things that you know that you're weak in. You cannot let them in the house. Told y'all, there's certain food that I can't have in the house. If it's in the house, eventually. I might be strong on Monday. But Wednesday roll around. It's been in the house Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm going in the kitchen. I'm going with it. I don't care how many calories it puts on. I don't care what it does against my body, against my health. And, you know, I, I have this craving. My nature wants that particular thing. And I'm not strong enough. To keep that thing in the house. Watch this. The kitchen. Bringing a certain food in. From the supermarket. I can't do it. Now watch this. The enemy. Has a supermarket. That you go to. To bring content. Into your house. That you're. Where you're weak in. And it works. Watch this. Through your TV. Let me say this. I'm trying to get to where I need to get to tonight. Lord have mercy. But God is speaking in, in another way before I get to the desperation. Do you know that the content on TV is from people and the, and the content from people behind the people are from spirits? Even when people are pretending and they're acting the enemy still comes in to tap into our spiritual nature. And because of the spirit that's coming through, have y'all ever, can you be honest? Have you, can, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it out there with a church filter. So I'm going to put it with a church filter just so you, you, you process it. You, you, you'll be able to process it. 
Have you ever been aroused from something you saw on TV? Don't type it. Don't 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 just just listen to the video. Just just watch the video flow. You ain't got to give it away. But uh, just but I, I'm talking to you. Have you ever been aroused by something that was on TV? Okay. Have you forget the oh, forget the arousal thing? I'm gonna go somewhere else. Have you ever, just a simple thing, we talked about food and weight and fighting off calories. Have you ever been tempted to eat something because of a certain commercial, you know, a Red Lobster commercial came on and they squeezed that buttery juice all over that stuff and the lemon and all stuff all over that seafood. And you're like, man, I gotta, I just want Red Lobster so bad. Or Burger King, and they make the burgers look so juicy. And of course, when you get there, they never look like that. McDonald's, and they never look like the they never look like this the advertisement. But you saw a food commercial, and you were like, "Man, I just want that! Woo, so bad, Lord, you know, woo." The TV is the enemy's supermarket, and it it brings content into our home. That many times that we are not strong enough to stay away from. And if it's in our house, it's broadcast into our house. If it's in our house and we're not strong enough, we're eventually going to succumb to it. That's why you should never fall asleep with the TV on. There's the left side of the brain, the right side of the brain. I forgot which side, but one of the sides of the brain is our guardian. And it's the thing that actually protects us, that gives us sense that says, don't do that. That's not good for you. Don't take that in. Don't touch that. But when you are asleep, the guardian is now resting and whatever content hits us while we're asleep, it goes right through to our spirit. So when you are awake, you're on guard. Say, oh, no, mm -mm, I don't want that. That ain't good for me. That's not good for my spirit. But when you are asleep, and that could be in a spiritual context as well, because many of us are awake physically, but we're asleep spiritually. And we are when we are asleep spiritually, content comes in and it, it, it bypasses the brain, goes right right to our soul, and we act on it. All right. I'm, 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 I'm going to push on here. Are you desperate? Have you ever been desperate? Be honest with yourself. Let me give you some things that you need to look at and how dangerous desperation is. If you... Let me give you that example about the food. If you fill yourself up with good food, there will be no room for junk food. I'm going to say it again. If you fill yourselves up with food that's good for your body, there will be no room, no temptation for junk food. When you're hungry and you're out and you don't have time, you don't, there's just no time to cook a good meal, how many of us go through the drive-thru and we end up picking up junk food because we don't have the time? There's so many, there's so many tentacles like a spider or an octopus to this, I'm, and I'm trying not to take you in too many different directions tonight, but I'm, I'm getting revelation upon revelation to, to help you with tonight. I hope you're staying with me. Many of us have brought junk food home in the capacity of people who were not healthy for us, who were not good for us, and we picked them up easily because we were vulnerable because we were hungry. 
good food for your body takes time to prepare. Y'all not with me? That's why the enemy, my cousin Tony Wright is on. God bless you, man. I love you, man. Sorry, Mr. Call. I will get back to you, man. Many times we do not take the time to fill up with things that, that are healthy for us, there are so many treasures in the word of God that will set you free. This is good eating right here. This is awesome eating. But we don't, we don't want to take the time to properly cook and properly sit down and properly digest what is good for our bodies so we get fast food, which are things that are of the flesh. Y'all not with me tonight. The flesh says, let's get in the bed if we have a relationship right now. Let's not wait for marriage. That's what the flesh says. Fast food and junk food, and you're bringing that into your home, and you wonder why you're sick, and you wonder why you're bound, and you wonder why you're hurting so bad when they walk away from you, and you wonder why you can't, your body is suffering, and your heart is shutting down, and your arteries are clogged, and you're at the point of death, and you're, you're, you're not with me tonight. Stevie Haversham, God bless you, man. So tonight, God bless you, cousin. I love you, man. Tony. So tonight, when we... Oh, here's another. Here's another one. Here's another one. When we are unorganized, you know you can be unorganized in your diet and when you eat. Many of you have health issues. You're not playing. Some of you have health issues which require you to eat at a certain time, you know, there's certain, you just can't go a whole lot of time without eating because you start sweating and you feel like you're going to pass out and all of that kind of stuff. If you're unorganized and you're just out and you're unorganized in your eating habits, that's going to force you, you you're sweating, you're about to pass out. You don't have time to go home and cook a meal and pull out pots and pans. You don't have time to go home and pull out pots and pans. So your flesh says, I've got to go through the drive through How many times, here's another one. How many times have we gone through the drive through and once we pulled off, we realized that they didn't give us what we thought we ordered. Y'all ain't with me. Or we, we pulled off and found out that what they gave us was not fresh. Y'all not with me tonight. Or what they gave us was something was wrong with it, but because we didn't check it and because we were in a hurry and because we were desperate and because we were unorganized, we ended up getting jacked up and we paid, we paid for it. Ladies and gentlemen, love is going to cost you something. How many of us have been burnt going through the drive through I have. Have you? How many of us have been burnt in life? Many of us have had jacked up marriages because you married what you got in the drive-thru. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. Many of us have been in jacked up marriages because we married what we got through the drive-thru. And by the time, once you pulled off, you ever get too, you ever get so mad, you, you're too, you've gone, you're too far from the place after you pulled off and you realize that, man, I, I can't, I am so angry. I didn't get what I wanted. They forgot something. The food was foul. It was old, but I'm too far away to go back. So you've committed to that meal. Many of us have committed to people who were the equivalent of junk food in our lives, and because we went too far, y'all, oh Lord have mercy, from the source where we got them from, we ended up committing. How many of us have done that? We've married people, we've been in a relationship with people because we went too far. We've slept with them, we've committed. We, 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 we felt we were uh, I'm just stuck with this, and we ended up bringing junk food 
into our houses, into our homes, into our spirit. There are some people, watch this. People that do fast food, that the owners and creators of fast food know that this stuff is no good for you. Thank you, Evangelist Can Cannon, for quoting Hosea 4 and 6. They, they know that this stuff is no good for you. They know what this stuff ultimately does to you. If you eat this stuff on a continuous basis, you continue to bring this stuff and put it in your system. But they want your money. They want the things from you. The enemy has sent some artery clogging folk on assignment into our lives to clog us up. You've been, you know, if you got a blockage, your chest starts hurting. You know, you can't breathe. And many of you are wondering, and when you can't breathe, you can't you can't lift up your hands. And some of you are wondering why, you know, you ever been in church and you and the spirit of God is moving, but you see everybody else, but you can't, you're having a hard time. You just that weight from that person, that artery clogging person, you're so attached to them. You're, you, you ever feel like your heart is just, you're just, you're in so much pain because the enemy has sent that artery clogging rascal to clog up the arteries of your spirit where it will affect your heart and keep you from being healthy to make healthier choices. Y'all not with me tonight. Let me move. Desperation. I've been desperate in my life. You've been desperate in your life. There's certain times you've been desperate in your life. God bless you, Jermaine. God bless you, Kimmer. You've been desperate in your life. God bless you, Alvina. I've been desperate. Watch this. Some of you are desperate now. Oh, yeah, you might not admit it. But when I go through this list and I deal with this list, some of you are going to agree tonight. When you're desperate, you are spiritually unorganized. When you are spiritually unorganized, your diet is going to suffer. You're going to end up picking up junk food. You're not with me because you're not planning your meals. <laughs> you're not planning your meals. You're not planning your intake. There's certain shows, TV shows, I'm going back there for a minute, that I can't watch because I'm watching my spiritual diet. It took a minute for me to get over, to deal with this lust thing. I had, and we're talking about tonight, love is going to cost you something. The cost that love is going to cost you is, the, is, is the, what the cost is, is you spending the resources to get your act together before you add anybody else to the mix. You're counting up the cost, building yourself before you add anybody else in. Desperation, one more time, is from a, an organized spiritual person. Because spiritually, the spirit is a, is a, is a God, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and that spirit is a spirit of order. Sex works within the confines of marriage. It doesn't work outside of marriage. But if you're desperate spiritually, if you don't buff it, if you're spiritually unorganized, you're going to put the cart before the horse, and... Even though you might turn it around later on, there's always a price to pay. You reap what you sow. Whatever you put in the ground, it's going to come up. It's going to yield itself after its kind. Whatever you put in the ground, it's going to come up. 
Desperate people, watch this, are always clingy. When you're clingy, it's because you're desperate. You're desperately trying to hold on to something because there are some, there are some things that are missing. And can we be honest tonight? You were raised by your parents. Your parents were human. Your parents couldn't catch everything. All right, your parents may not have dotted every I and crossed every T. Or whoever you were raised by. But there were some things in your upbringing that you went through that your parents knew about and couldn't fix or that they may not have never known about. But these things created some needs in our lives. And as you grew up, those needs were never fully dealt with. So uh, uh, along the line, you ended up picking up bad habits because there were some gaps you were so desperately trying to fill and fulfill in your life. And because of that, you could have, it's a lack of love. Have you felt, did you feel a lack of love? God bless you, Natasha. And your upbringing, those things make you clingy and, and needy, even as Sharon Baker said, as well. And when you're clingy, you, you hold on to stuff. Have you ever seen children hold on to a bad parent? When the police are trying to take that parent out because, because they, they have been, they've mistreated the children, the children are still holding on. Yeah. Y'all not with me tonight. That children, that child is still trying to hold on to that bad parent. Y'all not with me. Even as the police are trying to take them out of the house for what they've done to those children, the children is that's all they know is dysfunction and and calamity and and they're just clinging on to what what they 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 that's the, to what they know. Many of us, as a result, have clung on to bad people because it's all that we know, because there's some gaps that are missing, that have been missing in our lives for so long. From our childhood, those gaps have been missed. There's been some things that have been desperately missing that have not been fulfilled, have not been dealt with. We haven't dealt with those things. And as a result, we're clinging. We're desperate. Next, desperate people constantly need an update on their relationship status. What does that mean? They, they keep asking questions. You ever met, you ever met somebody that was clingy? And they'd be, like, uh, they'd be like, are we together? Do you still love me? Are we all right? Um, is everything okay? Is, is, uh, have y'all done that to somebody? Are we all right? Is, you know, um, is, are we all right? Is there, let me know what I can do. Whatever I can do to, I'll do anything. What, what does it take? I'm, I'll fix it. Are we all right? Uh, are we okay today? I mean, you, honey, you all right? You still love me? Are you, you, desperate people constantly need an update status on the relationship. All right, next one. Desperate people always need and search for compliments. When you know what you have, you got what you have on, or what you're dealing with, or your gift that 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 you're being that just effective, your gift is effective, that God is using you, that you look good when you, you don't need a whole lot of compliments. If you know that you're fine, and you need to know it within your heart, I don't need y'all. I mean, I, I know that already. You, you're not, you know, and I'm not swayed by what you tell me because. I know what I am. And if you don't know what you are, you're going to be susceptible to what comes out of people's mouth, which comes from a deceitful heart. Oh, y'all not with me tonight. That's why when somebody tells you they love you, even though they don't mean it, you take it. Remember the movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate? And remember um, when... Uh, the young lady had wanted 
to be loved so much. She was in a, a bad relationship, bad marriage, and she had, was able to, as she killed her husband, she was able to get away and she spent time putting her life into her real estate business and she was able to get herself, shelter herself in her business. And, you know, Martin Lawrence had an agenda. Uh, I think what was his name was in the movie. Um, I can't think of it. Y'all y'all give me the names. Um, but he came along and she got her email that night that he came to the house and, and she was in tears. And she said, do you love me? You remember that? She asked him a series of questions. She asked him, do you love me? And the tears came down. And, and Darnell, they, thank you, Sharon. And Darnell knew that he had to tell her that he loved her in order for the sex to occur. When you need an update on a relationship status, when you have to rely on compliments, things that come out of people's mouths, Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, Darnell. She relied. Now, you and I saw it. We could see through it because we're watching the movie. Other people on the outside can watch our movie and understand better than we that are in the movie. Y'all not with me? We watch it on the screen. We're like, no, no, he don't love you. We, you know, we're watching the movie. But she needed affirmation because she was desperate. She came across hard at first on the outside, on the exterior, as a way to try to get, get rid of some people. But the enemy stayed around long enough, and you see, Darnell, watch this, the enemy was watching her. Let me see what she likes. Remember he got her that, that uh, Lalique, that, 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 ele that elephant or that dove or whatever that thing was, that angel, that angel, glass, crystal thing. He, the enemy studied, y'all not with me. What she liked and said, I'm, I'm going to get her heart according to the pattern that I see. And that's how the enemy works with us. All right. Desperate people always immediately drops their friends. Thank you, Sonya. Brandy. That's the, that was the name of the movie. Brandy. Um, desperate people always immediately drops their friends. How many of us met someone new and we immediately cut off all of our friends? We had no time for them. And we, we just we, we just had no time. And the only time we went back to our friends is after the person that we left them for hurt us. Desperate people drop their standards. I'm going to say that one more time. Desperate people drop their standards. How many of us out there can, and see, if you, if you be honest with yourself tonight, what I'm saying tonight can help you. We've got three minutes. If y'all can hang in there with me, we'll be done in three minutes. How many of us have done things against our standards because we were so desperate for this particular person to be in our lives. We were so desperate. God bless you, Howard. You're right, Jermaine. How many of us have dropped our, dropped our standards because we were so desperate to have this whatever it was? Let me give you a, a quick an example. When your credit is bad, and you go, God bless you, Leah, still praying for you, love you, my friend. How many of us have ever tried to buy a car when we have bad credit? Okay, all right. Yeah. When you have bad credit, you don't get the happening lender with the excellent um, percentage rate, the rate, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, the, the borrow, the rate that, you know, the excellent rate. You've got to go to a secondary company that, you know, the, the interest rate is high. You Sometimes you got to have a, put down a bigger deposit. Um, and 
you got to go to the car dealer with you, and you and you really need a car. You got to get to work and you really need a car. You desperate for a car. A dealer can smell that a mile away. They see you desperate for a car. They see that you're not going to walk away when you hear because you're desperate. They see that your credit is jacked up. Just y'all, watch this, y'all. Watch this. You you need to rebuild your spiritual credit. This is how you rebuild your spiritual credit. You rebuild your spiritual credit. Now you're not desperate for anything. Now you can walk away from a bad deal. You know a bad deal when you see it. You know not to sign. Many of us have married a bad deal because our credit was so jacked up. When you are desperate to get a car and you're on a lot car lot you, you, and your credit is jacked up, You'll take almost any deal. And they hide it. Maybe behind a decent car payment. Something that you think you can afford. But they tack on the years. Y'all not yet. Huh? What's the use in paying the $300 car note. If you're going to pay for five, six years or more. And the car is going to break down way before you finish paying for it. Yeah, okay. I got to move on. I got I got. We got. One minute here. Oh, it's 10 o'clock, actually. God bless you, B. Michelle. Last one. Desperate people make excuses or ignore bad treatment. Desperate people, you make excuses for the person or you ignore bad treatment. There were times in my life when I had somebody in my life that treated me bad, but I ignored it because I was desperate. Watch this. Not even necessary desperate for the person. Watch this, watch this. But desperate for the work. I'm getting ready to hit y'all with something. Let me, let me, it's going to make you run. Let me, let me hit you with this as I sign off. A lot of dealers now, check your credit. They know you need a co-signer, but they don't tell you. But they let you take the car and you drive it around and you show people. Y'all not with me. You took it to church. You, you took it to your job. You shown people. Look at my car. Then they call you a day or two later and say, yeah, man, I'm so sorry, oh, Nicole, uh, Sh uh, uh, Shakita, I'm so sorry. You, you, you're going to need a co-signer. <laughs> Sharon said, I'm always running. Y'all not, not with me. See, the thing is, if you, if you didn't take it off the lot, nobody knows that you were shopping for a car. Nobody's seen the car. So if the deal doesn't go through, quiet is just kept. You know, don't nobody know. But how they get you is they get you out of a need of desperation because you've shown the car to so many people. <laughs> you've driven around with it. Many times we're desperate, not because we actually, not because of the person, but we're desperate for many reasons for it to work. I'm desperate for this car because with my credit, my bad spiritual credit, I can't get another car like this. I can't, I can't, my credit is bad. I can't, I've got to deal with whatever, that, 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 whatever tricks and whatever weights this dealer has. Y'all not with me tonight as I sign off because I'm, I'm, I'm desperate. I've already driven this car. I've shown this car around. Now, now I'm desperate for, now, now they got me. I, I, I need a co-signer. That's, and that's how they get you. 
And that's how the enemy gets you. But if your credit was right, your credit was right, the deal would be done up front. There would be no hidden motives. You come in there and have your act together. It's a whole different shopping, car shopping experience. When your credit is 800 <laughs> or in the 700s, it's a whole different experience versus versus your credit being in the 300s, 400s, you know, 500s. You know, it's a whole different experience. It's a whole different experience when you have $10,000 to drop on, drop on a car versus you coming in with 1500 bucks and your credit is shot. Love, I'm summing it all up right here. Love is going to cost you something. The cost, first and foremost, is investing in yourself. Get your spiritual credit together. Get your life together. Get your relationship in order with God. Learn to buffet, kill, and destroy every need of the flesh. I'm, I'm going to say this. This just came to me. I bought a car once. It was a used car. Y'all got to be ready for this. I'm, 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 I'm going off. I, I promise you. I, this, was, this was a used car. I went to the lot. I kept going back. I, I was so desperate for this car. I laid hands on the car. Y'all not with me. And I claimed the car. Y'all not. Oh, Lord, help us. I touched it. And because I touched it and laid hands on it, it, it was something that I should not have had because there was something wrong with this car. The engine was jacked up. But if I was, but I bought it and I laid hands, and I, you know, those spiritual principles, you know, you speak, you speak, whatever you know, you speak, those spiritual principles are real. Now this is going to be rough. This is going to be rough. I'm going to say this and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to go. The sinful, lustful nature, I want to deal with the flesh, the lustful nature. Many of us are jacked up. Watch this. Watch this. This is not, I'm not saying this to be carnal in any way. I'm just want to, I want to try to help you with this as I sign off. We're laying hands on ourselves in private. All right. You're not, you're, let me say this. I, I got to say this. We're, we're, we're laying hands on ourselves creating and stirring up a nature that is going to die on us. It's going to commit us to some things that the engine is bad. It's going to commit us to some things that are going to be that's going to be destructive because you are touching things in private and you're stirring up that nature. You are claiming ownership of that nature. And that nature now is, you're now taking that nature on the road. And that, again, is going to fail you. So you've got to buffet this nature. You've got to deal with this nature. Got to deal with what comes in your home. You've got to deal with what you are committing yourselves to by your mind, by your spirit, by the things you touch. Oh, yeah. Some of you tonight need to curse and bind that lustful thing that you're dealing with. There's some stuff in your drawers you need to throw in the trash. There's some things you're going to have to buff it and stop. You, you, Come on now, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to help you because it's going to, you're claiming and stirring up an appetite that you're not going to be able to handle. 
and it's going to cause you to make bad decisions. Watch this. I took that car. Y'all seen that analogy where I told you I drove at, down to Virginia to see my father. I lived in New Jersey at the time. I drove down in that car to New Jersey and the engine died halfway between Jersey and Virginia. I was stuck on the road and I was desperate, but it was my fault because I touched it and claimed it. Yeah, you're not with me. You, and that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to commit to certain things by touching them. And it always yields a bad result. And it, because the enemy wants us to get stuck on the road. Because then we're desperate for someone, watch this, to pick us up. Oh, how many of us enter into a relationship that we normally would not have entered into. We allowed them to pick us up because we were stuck on the road. That's it for the night. That's it. That's it. I'm done. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. Y'all know that y'all need to share this with somebody tonight. You need to share this video with someone. I pray that this teaching has helped you. This is part three of love is going to cost you something. You've got to be willing to pay the price. I had to pay it. It's not easy. And you have to pay it. If you think that a healthy diet comes without putting anything in it. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Trisha. If you think that a healthy diet and staying healthy isn't going to cost you something, you are sadly mistaken. Healthy food costs more. Many of you don't want to read the Bible because it, it, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you a sacrifice. Many of us don't want to make that sacrifices. So as a result, we eat junk food. We eat what the world and our sinful nature, which Paul spoke about in Romans 7. What was that? Romans 7. 15, uh, Romans chapter 7, 15 through 20 speaks about that nature. Caroline Haithcote is watching. Sophie Small is watching. Sherry, God bless you. Leah, love you. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the world says. Don't let the world dictate. You have one soul. Remember that car analogy I used? If you would only have one car in your life, if you are only going to get one car, no way you're going to get another car. Pam Holloway Cooper is on. God bless you and your family. How would you treat that car? If you could only get one car, God, let, God bless you, Michelle. Love you, Michelle Williams. If you only would have one car your entire life, would you be careful in terms of the car that you pick? Would you do the research would you put in the necessary information that you need to pick a car that's dependable? Would you take care of that car? Would you change the oil? Would you do what you need to do? How about your soul? You only have one soul. So what are you going to do? There's an eternity past, but there's an eternity waiting for you. And if you follow according to the world's concern, you're going to lose your soul. But if you're really concerned about your soul tonight, you're going to make better decisions for the things that take care of your soul. And those are going to be your spiritual principles that are going to guide you to life.